everybody, this is Josh here, the Gray Bearded Green Beret, and I have finished my winter moccasins. It was a DIY winter moccasin kit from my friends up at Lower the North. Last week's video was on me hand stitching the lowers, and this week what I'm going to talk you through is how I actually made the gaiters for the uppers. So again, this is just my process and how I did it and following their instructions. So if you want detailed instructions, I recommend you go over to the Lore of the North channel here on YouTube and you can get those as well as go to their website loreofthenorth.com and you can take a look at all the other DIY kits they have including this one. It could be summer mocks if winter's not your thing, you don't need something like this, you can make summer mocks. If sewing and using a sewing machine is not your thing, you can also get the same kit but with hide uppers, deer hide uppers instead of the canvas. Anyway, I'll put all those links down in the description below. Not gonna lie, this was a very, very fun project to complete and the instructions were very detailed uh, and very accurate. Uh, and I personally think these came out perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for when I'm gearing up for this winter. Uh, so really the process is very straightforward. What I did first was I basically measured out the distance around the ankle and that gave me one measurement. And then my second measurement was basically my calf measurement, which would be kind of the circumference of the two. And then my third measurement was the height that I wanted this gator to come up. So I brought these up to about knee high to give me the max amount of protection that I could get from these gators. Once I measured that out, it was as simple as taking those measurements and using a template that comes with the instructions, the printed instructions, and tracing that out on the canvas. And once I got that pattern traced out on the canvas, it was as simple as cutting that pattern out. And for me, I went ahead and pinned the pattern together because I don't really trust my cutting ability. The bottom layer, when it's folded over, tends to slip as I'm cutting and I end up with an uneven seam there and that's not what I want. So I went ahead and pinned those. After I pinned those, I went ahead and cut that pattern out and set it up for the next steps. After the pattern was cut out, what I did was I wanted to put this seam on the bottom edge of that canvas because this is a woven fabric, so it will fray, it will come undone, so you have to bind that. Uh, so what I did was I pinned the tape all along the bottom edge. Once the bias tape was pinned to the bottom, I went ahead and I measured the location for where I wanted to have my decorative ribbon, and then I pinned that as well. For my sewing, what I'm using is a vintage Universal Brand Deluxe Straight Stitch Sewing Machine. And while it's great for straight stitches, that's really all it does. So I did run into a couple of, let's call them, challenges when finishing out this project with just a straight stitch machine. But I was able to work through those, so I'll kind of show you how I got around those things. I went ahead and stitched the bias tape along the bottom edge of the canvas. With this, it's not a completely straight line because you do have a curve that you're accounting for for the top of your foot. So you just gotta kinda be careful when you go around that area in your sewing machine. After that was finished, I went ahead and stitched both sides of the decorative ribbon, making sure that it was nice and straight. And when I did my first one, I didn't really pay attention to the pattern as much. So I just kind of put it on there and then cut it and then stitch that in place. But for the second one, I paid a little more attention to the pattern placement so that I had a nice looking pattern uh, right down in the center on the front of the mock. Once the decorative ribbon was on, I went ahead and stitched the Lord of the North logo and I stitched it front and center. It says in the instructions to go ahead and put it on the back, but that's just them being modest. That's them being humble. I was loud and proud of the Lord of the North kit. So I put mine front and center for all to see. The next step in the process was, was for me to basically sew these buttonholes here on the front. And this particular one, I've got two different styles on here, and I'm actually doing kind of a field test on that. Uh, one was done with regular thread, one was actually done with the artificial sinew that comes with the kit. I used the same stitching pattern for them, but I want to see if one is better than the other. Uh, for the other mock, I did them all with artificial sinew. I'm pretty sure that's going to be the most durable. Anyway, with that Universal Deluxe straight stitch only sewing machine, it became a real uh, it became a real challenge getting these buttonholes sewn. I don't have a buttonhole attachment. I don't have 
a zigzag function on that machine because it's just straight stitch and it does straight stitch very well. What it doesn't do is anything other than straight stitches. So what I had to do was, was search through YouTube and I found a channel, uh, I wish I could remember who it was, uh, but it was kind of, um, how did she word it? It's not heirloom stitches. How was it worded? Heritage? Wasn't heirloom, wasn't heritage. Vintage? Wasn't vintage. Traditional? I gotta go look it up. Sewing buttonholes by hand. It was an English lady. I remember that much. Oh, huh. historical buttonholes. To begin, first mark out the length of your buttonhole. For demonstration purposes, I'm making a three-quarter inch long buttonhole, but always be sure to do a test to make sure your button can go through easily. So I can't do it with my machine, so I had to hand sew these. The video that I used was from a lady named Bernadette Banner, 415,000 subscribers, a lot of people watching sewing right now. Uh, but the video is called Hand Sewn Buttonhole Stitch Historical Techniques. Historical was the word I was looking for. So thanks Bernadette, enjoyed your tutorial, it worked really well. So anyway, I, hand, I had to hand sew these buttonholes on here. So it took me a little longer than it would take you with a, a modern machine that has a buttonhole or attachment or a zigzag function would have made it even easier. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with that. Main thing is you cut you cut those, then after you cut those, you stitch that to kind of hold that edge together and keep it from fraying. And I'm really happy with how these came out. And I like mine better than I like yours because I hand stitched mine. So I worked harder for these. After I got the buttonhole stitched, it was time for me to take that flat piece of canvas with everything laid out on it and turn it into a gator, turn it into the lower tube. So, with it inside out, I just sewed along the sew line that's clearly defined here on the pattern. And then because my machine is straight stitch only, again, it came back to, to haunt me a little bit. The instructions call for a zigzag pattern going up the back, kind of along that excess, that seam allowance that you left on the pattern. Well, I don't have that ability. What I ended up doing was two lines of straight stitches. So it's basically double stitched and that seemed to have worked rather well. We'll see after I get some time in these. I can't imagine that that wouldn't work. Uh, so that's what I went with for that. If you have a zigzag option on your machine, then obviously you would want to go ahead and use that. After I got it all sewn up, I trimmed off all that excess garbage that I didn't want inside the gator. Then I flipped it right side out so that I could take a look at my work up to that point. The next step was to create this upper tunnel that your upper lace goes through. And this was a little bit more challenging for me as well because like a modern machine, it has a section that you can take off so that you can kind of set the tunnel on there and work it all the way around. Uh, well, you know, as you might have guessed, my vintage sewing machine does not do that at all. So I kind of had to be extra careful with this fold things kind of crazy ways and then push underneath to make sure that the bottom edge wasn't being sewed to the top edge. That may have happened several times on the first one, but by the second one I had gotten the hang of it and it was no problem. I did not sew this gator together accidentally once. This one I sewed together at least three times. After sewing that upper tunnel, it was time for me to route this upper lace in here. Uh, these are cotton strings, cotton laces that come with the kit, and the ends are dipped in beeswax to keep them from fraying. So following the instructions, all I did was run a safety pin through one side of that, put it in one of the holes, and then basically pushed that safety pin through and then pulled the seam alongside that ribbon. So it's kind of worked my way all the way around the back, and then the safety pin came out the other side, I pulled that and kept them even, and with that, my gator was laced. From there, my next step was to turn everything inside out, including the lower moccasin, and then sew the upper portion, the gator, to the lower portion, the actual moccasin. So, not a whole lot of difference there. Uh, I basically tacked it along the back seam, then I came around to the front and I tacked it again. From there, I just sewed using a whip stitch all the way around until I got back to that back tack and I finished off the knot there. 
Then I came back around to the front with another thread starting at the tack. I worked from the middle all the way around the other side until I got to the back and then I went ahead and finished that off just like I finish off all the other knots. That looks pretty good. From there it was a matter of running my laces through the back which if you remember when I made the lower moccasins I made this leather tab here at the bottom so I just route the lace through there that's what I used to tie the gaiter around my lower leg. Overall I think this kit took me I think about four to six hours for the actual lowers and probably each one of these uppers took me about two to three hours but you know I'm not exactly well versed at running a sewing machine but I do know how to do it and you should too. Uh, so I would say six hours plus about four so about a ten hour project so this can be done in a long day but it definitely is a good weekend project and this is a traditional winter moccasin and this is something that you'll have for years to come to enjoy outside in your wilds of choice 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 during the winter time so handmade by you DIY kits are awesome. I really like these DIY kits from Lure of the North and I'm going to get some more of those and make some beaver mittens next and then I'm going to make a canvas anorak. Might even get into their snowshoe kits that they have and uh, their toboggans, their, their sleds uh, for the winter time. So a lot of projects I've got going on here in Greybeard Media Studios and uh, hope you guys are enjoying it. Again, Make sure you support Lore of the North. Go over to their channel. Give them a subscribe. If you found this information valuable at any time, you can click on my logo in the lower right-hand side. Lower right-hand side of your screen. It's opposite for me. Lower right-hand side of your screen. And you'll be subscribed to my channel. If you want to get all the notifications, just make sure you click all notifications. Click that notification bell. Links in the description. I appreciate your views. appreciate your likes, comments, your shares, and questions. Put those down below. And just because it's cold outside, don't let old man winter keep you on your couch. Get yourself outside. Enjoy the wilds of your choice. Still a lot of fun to be had in the winter. There's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad clothing choices. These are an outstanding clothing choice. Hope to see you in the woods.